The speed attribute can be used to calculate the speed of a given property's change in value. Speed is calculated by adding the word speed, all in lowercase, after a property reference. It will return a single dimension output for the property's rate of value change, and it will calculate the directional change on a multi-dimension value. Okay, so let's use the speed attribute in an example. Say you wanted to display the speed of this rocket on the text readout layer here. First things first, you're going to want to open the position property on the rocket layer by hitting P on your keyboard, and this is so that we can pick with the value. Then come to the speed readout layer, twirl down the layer's contents, go to text, source text, and alt click the stopwatch to add a new expression. So then if you grab the pick whip tool, you can come down and let go over the position property on the rocket layer. So automatically it's added some syntax for us and it's referencing the rocket layers transform position property. And specifically it's referencing the X axis, which is the first index in the array. This happens because we're using the pick whip tool to connect a single dimension property, which is the source text here, to a multi-dimension property, which is position. So it's gonna automatically just link to the first index in the array. So for this example, you can just remove the bracket zero bracket from the end of the reference and now we can start to work with the speed attribute. So if you click away from the expression field, you'll notice that the speed readout layer is showing object property, and that's because you're not actually giving it something to display. But if you come back down to the expression, and at the very end of the reference, place your cursor and type period speed. Now you can click away from the expression field, and now you'll notice it's giving us this really cool number, which is representing the rocket's current speed. And now, if you scrub the playhead, you'll notice the speed readout layer is updating the value in real time with the rocket's speed. And to make this number a little prettier, we can clip the decimal point by adding two fixed, capital F, open parenthesis, one, close parenthesis, and this is gonna only display one decimal point past the period. Another way you can use speed is to drive a particle emission value based on the speed of the source. So you might have noticed a rocket particles layer hidden under the rocket. Now this layer already has CC particle systems 2 applied and it has an expression on the position property. And so if you enable visibility on the layer and scrub the timeline, you'll see that particles are actually emitting behind the rocket as it launches. Now there's already an expression applied to the position property of the particle system's effect, and we'll go over this in more detail later in the course, but this is a two comp conversion, which is looking at the rocket source, and basically this attaches the source point of the position producer here to the rocket no matter where it is in the composition. But for now we're just gonna deal with birth rate. So first, you want to add an expression to the birth rate property here in the effect controls panel. So I'm gonna alt click the stopwatch, and it's gonna add some default syntax to your effect. So with this highlighted, if you grab the pick whip tool and drag it up to the rocket position layer and let go, it's going to add some default syntax and we're gonna remove this reference for the X axis here at the end. So just remove everything in the brackets. And then to replace the bracket, you're gonna type period speed. So once you click away from the expression field, you'll notice that the birth rate is now going to drastically change as the rocket launches. And you'll see it actually clips at 1000 here, halfway through the animation. So this is a pretty large amount of particles and you can actually trim this a little bit by adding a division operator. And then I'm just gonna do 1600, but you can do whatever number feels natural for you. And so if you click off the expression field, you'll notice that now we've trimmed this number considerably back down to a more natural number. So if you scrub the timeline, the birth rate is gonna go from zero, steadily up, one, two, three, all the way to 0.5, and then it eventually gets up to about 1.3 here, and then it slowly goes away. And so now if you preview the scene, you'll notice that the birth rate is actually affecting how many particles are coming out of the rocket as it launches. So you'll notice a couple particles come out of the back of the rocket right as it takes off, and then a bunch more come out behind it as the speed increases. But the most important thing to note is that no particles are emitted if the rocket is still. And this is a really useful tool for an effect like Particular, where you can change the number of particles emitted based on a source's speed. 
The velocity attribute is very similar to speed, but it will output an array with each dimension speed instead of a single speed. Velocity, like speed, is calculated by adding the word velocity, all in lowercase, after a property's reference. The velocity attribute returns a multi-dimension output for the property's rate of value change. Now let's take a look at how to apply the velocity attribute. If you come over to the existing expression and select speed and to fixed and change it to velocity, you can then click away from the expression field and you'll now get a three dimensional array output. The first number here before the comma is the X axis and the second value is the Y axis followed by a comma and then the third number is for the Z axis. So if I scrub the timeline, you'll notice that only the Y axis is changing and the X and the Z remain at zero speed. We'll cover arrays more in depth later in the course, but for now, you're just gonna add an index of bracket one bracket to the end of velocity, which is gonna target the Y axis instead of all three. And now if you click off the expression, you'll see the X and the Z axis disappear and we're left with the Y axis but you'll notice that the velocity is displayed as a negative value, unlike the speed, which was a positive value. This is how velocity works with the multi-dimensional property. It's not giving us the directional change, it's only giving us the y-axis change, which is technically negative because the rocket is moving up in the composition. So to fix this, we're just gonna add a multiplication operator to the end, and then a negative one. And this is gonna times the entire value here by negative one. And now if you click away from the expression field, the minus goes away, and we're left with just the y-axis showing us the rocket velocity. You can find the velocity and speed syntax in the expression language menu under the property category. We've arrived at the end of lesson 204, calculating speed and velocity of value change. If you enjoy this expressions course, consider purchasing the paid content. It includes in-depth documentation, extra tutorial content, high definition videos, and all the project files used in the training. Your purchase will help to create more free courses like this in the future.